In today's video, we'll look at the conditions called hypochlorhydria and achlorhydria. We'll look at what are the symptoms and what can you do to support your production of stomach acid with diet, supplements, and lifestyle. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cam and I post videos on nutrition and mindset to help you become the best version of yourself. Let's dive right into today's topic by first explaining what is stomach acid. Stomach acid is a colorless fluid that's produced by your stomach's lining. It's highly acidic and helps you break down food for easier digestion and better nutrient absorption. How acidic should your stomach acid be? Well, acidity is measured on a pH scale, and that scale ranges from 0 to 14. So the lower the pH, the stronger the acidity of the fluid. For example, battery acid has a pH of 0, and stomach acid should have a pH within the range of 1 and 3. So that's quite acidic, considering that battery acid can dissolve materials like bone or metal. Why is stomach acid so important? Well, stomach acid is essential for the breakdown of protein. So stomach acid won't go and digest a protein by itself, but it will activate an enzyme called pepsin. And pepsin will help you break down your, your proteins into individual amino acids, which are then absorbable by the body. Also, stomach acid is essential for the absorption of certain minerals and trace minerals. So examples of these minerals are magnesium, calcium, potassium, manganese, uh, copper, and iron. Stomach acid is also part of our defense system. So if you don't have enough, you might not be able to break down the microbes and pathogens that you ingest. Hydrochloric acid also regulates the rate of stomach emptying. So it's just important for our digestion as a whole. Stomach acid is also important for the absorption of B12. So B12 is absorbed in the GI tract a bit later on, but you have this glycoprotein in your stomach called intrinsic factor. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, you may have issues absorbing B12 later on. And this type of anemia is called pernicious anemia, it can, it, and it can have quite severe consequences in the long term. So uh, you can have nerve issues, cognitive dysfunction, um, depression, you can have an unsteady gait, so when you walk, you're, you lose balance. Um, I'm not sure if I said it, but depression also is a consequence. The common symptoms of low stomach acid includes acid reflux, or also GERD, which is essentially just chronic acid reflux. And this is counterintuitive for most people, but having low stomach acid, not high, low stomach acid, is often a cause for acid reflux. And that's because we have this valve that connects the esophagus to the stomach. And this valve has sensors that can sense the acidity of the stomach contents. So when the acidity increases as we eat, the closing pressure of the valve increases. But if your stomach doesn't reach that adequate level of acidity, the valve won't close. It will stay open and then your stomach acid can come back up, uh, especially if you lay down after a meal or something like that. Other symptoms include feeling physically full but still having that desire to eat. You can also have bloating, indigestion, and gas, which makes sense because we have undigested uh, food going through our, D our GI tract. You can also have uh, undigested food in your stool, uh, trouble digesting meat, and also low stomach acid has been linked with things like skin issues, asthma, food sensitivities, and allergies. If you do have any of these symptoms, there is a way that you can test your stomach acid levels at home. So it's fairly easy. All you have to do is mix a quarter teaspoon of baking soda in about four to six ounces of water, mix it together, and then drink it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning before you eat or drink anything. So as soon as you drink the solution, start a timer, and uh, you can time up to five minutes. So ideally you want to burp within the first two, three minutes, ideally before that, but if you do burp within three minutes, you're good. But if you burp after three minutes, um, then you probably have low stomach acid. 
if you don't burp at all, which is me usually, uh, you have very low stomach acid. But don't worry, there are things you can do to improve this. Things you can do to help your production of stomach acid. So first you can take apple cider vinegar. So you can take one or two tablespoons and dissolve it in a bit of water and drink it before a meal. You can also take a supplement called betaine hydrochloric acid. So if you do this, make sure that your supplement contains pepsin, which is the enzyme. So the chloride in betaine hydrochloric acid will act as a building block and over time your body it will help your body create its own stomach acid so other components of stomach acid are potassium chloride and sodium chloride so making sure that you have enough potassium and salt in your diet is uh, essential so betaine hydrochloric acid is quite powerful so i would recommend working with a naturopath or another healthcare practitioner to determine your optimal dose Another thing you can do is to reduce your use of acid neutralizers, so things like uh, proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, H2 receptor antagonists, and antiacids. So these will help you in the moment if you're having acid reflux, uh, but the effect is pretty short term, and in the long term it will just make your, your issue worse. Vitamin D and calcium also play a role here. So that valve that I mentioned earlier, that the opening and the closing of this valve is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And calcium is really important for the proper muscle contraction of uh, the, the smooth muscle. And then vitamin D comes in because it controls our calcium levels. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, you might also be deficient in calcium. You can also get checked for H. pylori. So an H. pylori infection will essentially attack your stomach lining and can impact your stomach acid production. Last but not least, stress. So we know that stress can wreak havoc on our body uh, entirely, but that's especially true for digestion. So personally, I think that this is the most important one to tackle and that's speaking from experience. <laughs> So our body really needs to be in a rest and digest mode for our digestion to carry its functions such as creating or producing stomach acid. So a couple of things, a couple of easy things you can try is to just close all your screens when you eat, eat with people that uh, bring you joy and, and relaxation and that you enjoy their presence. Um, also, what I like to do is just go hide in the washroom before and just take five deep breaths just to really get myself into a rest and digest mode. Also, um, chew enough, chew slowly, and just enjoy your meal. Something I like to do is just sneak in a little thought of gratitude and really acknowledge my meal before I eat. I feel like that just grounds me and it helps me get into that 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 rest and digest mode. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It will really help me out. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.